Hello and welcome to Unit 2, Lesson 2, Prehistory Hunter-Gatherers and Cave Dwellers. We're going to go ahead and read this introduction and then we'll move to the student guide to see the order to complete our lesson. So early humans were hunter-gatherers and cave dwellers. From the beginning, humans distinguished themselves as thinking, inventive beings. They used fire to cook wood food, warm themselves, and fry animals away. They crafted stone tools to help them hunt animals and fashion skins into clothing and shelter. Usually, we think of that way of life as belonging to the distant past. But did you know that there are people in the world today who still live very much as people in the Stone Age? All right, now let's take a look at our student guide. This is the introduction we just read online. Our objectives for today. We want to describe the characteristics of hunter-gatherers, describe the importance of the human discovery of the use of fire, identify the period of time when humans made tools from stone, list examples of ways early humans used and adapted to their environment, we want to recognize that early humans were nomadic hunter-gatherers and cave dwellers and explain the main reasons for human migrations at the end of the Ice Age. All right, so you need your Aussie's artifacts for this lesson. You can click here and print that off or you can look in your student guide. The keywords that we want to make sure we know, history, the period of the past for which written records exist. We know that prehistory is the time before that, before written records existed. And the nomadic is wandering from place to place in search of food. Make sure those terms are in your history journal. If you completed lesson one with me, then you should already have those in there. Go back, make sure they're there. Make sure you understand them and they make sense. Activity one is offline, tune in with nature. You want to go back and check your reading. We have the same pages um, that we read from lesson one, pages 17 through 20. So kind of go back, flip through, review that, check your answers and make sure from the questions and make sure that you understand everything. And it's always a good idea to review the lesson from the previous day in order to make sure you have a good understanding before moving on. All right, so again, make sure you have a definition for those terms. And then we are going to go on to activity two, and this is online. Moving back online, even today there are people who live in much the same way as hunter-gatherers lived thousands of years ago. So you can go to some websites and scan briefly, find some similarities in the lives of early humans and Australian Aboriginals and Canadian Arctic Inuits. So if you click on these links, it's going to open up those websites. Here is the um, Australian Aboriginals website, so you can go ahead, click on that link, um, read through a lot of this information, just kind of scan over it and look, what do you see? What's similar? What's very different from the way you live? And then go and take a look at the Canadian Arctic Inuits. See if you can find some similarities there. It talks about the Inuit culture. Um, and this is a shorter, shorter um, passage here to read, but you can look at the side and see there's some more um, links that you can click on. But what do you see? What do you see that's different from how we live now um, and things that are similar to what you're reading about in your history text? All right, so in 1991, a group of people hiking in the mountains near the border of Austria and Italy stumbled across something amazing, the body of a man embedded in ice. It turned out that the man had lived and died more than 5,000 years ago. Archaeologists dubbed him Otzi the Iceman. And what did archaeologists learn from Otzi? Let's take a look. So you're going to use the following website to complete Otzi's artifact sheet. So go ahead and you can click on that link to open up your artifact sheet. And this is what we're going to be answering. What um, We're going to look at an axe, a bow and arrow and quiver, a dagger, and we're going to tell what materials they are made of. What might Otzi have used it for? All right, it also tells us to click on the following topics once we're on the website. The mummy is a world sensation and the Iceman's clothing and equipment. So let's go ahead and click on that link. It's going to take us here to the website. All right, and so um, when we take a look, the mummy as a world sensation, it's going to tell us a little bit more about what they found, what it looked like. Um, you can look, you can see what did he look like, a glimpse into the body, 
Um, it looks like maybe he had tattoos. You can look at the mummification process. So some really interesting um, facts there. And then also, if we go back, it had us click on the Iceman's clothing and equipment. All right, this is where you are going to find some information about those tools that he used. So if you click on this first one, this is the axe. So it asked us about the axe. So the most important item of an Iceman's equipment is his copper bladed axe. The carefully smooth U haft is around 60 centimeters long. At the top of the haft there is a fork shaft into which the blade was fixed with birch tar and tightly bound with the thin leather straps to keep it in place. The nine and a half centimeter blade is trapezoidal in shape and made of almost pure copper. The narrow end was produced by cold hammering after the blade was cast. All right, so you can read a little bit more about the ax and then go back to your artifact sheet and tell what it was made of and how he used it. You're also going to do that for and here's a little hint. If you go back here, this is the path that you follow. So if you'll go ahead and when you're on that axe, if you'll go back here and click on the equipment. Now, instead of searching through all the pictures, it lists all of those that you can click on. So you have to read about the dagger, the bow, the quiver and its contents, and the arrows. And you're going to answer questions on all of those, on what they're made of and what Otzi might have used them for. So go ahead, do that. You can pause this recording as you fill out this chart if you would like to. And then you can come back and answer, what do these artifacts tell us about the life and times of the person who made them and used them? What evidence suggests Otzi was a hunter-gatherer? And what evidence tells you Otzi was not part of the Stone Age? So answer those questions, fill out this sheet, and then let your learning coach see that and your learning coach will mark this offline portion in your OLS as complete. All right, once you're done with that, you're going to move on to activity three. You can see that this activity is online. So going back online, we are going to open the interactive map and we're going to see how the migratory patterns of animals might have caused people to move from place to place. All right, so um, when we click on the interactive map down here, the Bering Land Bridge, and you can see, all right, animals migrated to Beringia from Asia in search of food. People depended on the animals for food, clothing, and tools. They followed the animals. Over time, Beringia became crowded. There were more people and fewer animals. The animals moved on to North America, and the people followed. Eventually, the ice melted, the seas rose, and the Beringia land bridge disappeared under the water. The people and animals remain in North America. So here's that information. That's the Bering Sea and the Bering Strait. You can click on that FYI, find out a little bit more information. So nobody's sure when people migrated to North America. About 38,000 BC, animals migrated across the Beringia land bridge, and people probably did too. And then the water rose and the land bridge disappeared. About 26,000 BC, Beringia opened up again. People almost certainly migrated this time. Most expert, experts believe that they were in America already. And then the land bridge disappeared again. About 10,500 BC, there's evidence of people as far south as Chile in South America, and now we're sure. All right, once you have completed your Aussie's artifact sheet and you have taken a look at that um, Beringia interactive map, you can then move on to your assessment. So you're going to click Begin Assessment. And there are five questions. Most of the questions are going to refer back to your reading from yesterday or from lesson one. So remember to review that and use your book if you need that to answer these questions. So number one, the early humans way of life made it possible for them to live in which kind of shelter? A, rock shelters and cliffs, B, tents, C, permanent homes, or D, caves. Number two, mark each statement if it describes early humans. So you can mark more than one. 
A. Early humans lived in caves, rock shelters, and cliffs, and in tents. B. An achievement of early humans was the mastery of fire. C. Early humans never worked together in groups. And D. For the most part, early hunter-gatherers were nomadic. Number three, mark each statement if it describes early humans. Again, you can mark more than one. A. Hunter-gatherers ate berries and nuts as part of their diet. B. Early humans used fire only for cooking. C. Early humans fashioned clothes out of animal skins and other products. 4. During the Stone Age, people invented tools such as daggers, spear points, and hand axes and made them mostly out of stone. Is this A. True or B. False? And then number 5. Why did early humans migrate to new places? A. Wild animals forced them to seek safer homes. B. They needed new lands to plant crops. C. They followed animal herds that moved as the seasons changed. Or D. They moved to escape more powerful groups of people. So once you have answered those five questions, you will have completed your assessment. Remember that you have to score 80% or above in order to master your lesson and unit assessments. On the lesson assessments, if you don't score 80% or above, go back and review. You can review your assessment, see which ones you got wrong, um, review your notes and reading. And you can retake that. You want to make sure that you retake it so that you do get 80% or above and that does count towards your progress. Once you are done with um, your assessment on lesson two and then you have given your Aussie's artifact sheet to your learning coach and they've marked that um, off in your OLS, you are now done with this lesson.